Hey guys, welcome back. This is part two of our large cordless random orbital polishers comparison test. This part consists more of the interviews where we talk to all the professional detailers to see their opinions and as to why they chose all of these polishers, what they liked about some, what they disliked about others. I'll introduce each individual. I'll ask them pretty much the same question and then I'll just let them speak. I'll show you at the very beginning each of their experience levels and if they're like a small shop, a volume shop, etc. The reason that I broke this up into two videos is if you watched the, the first one in its entirety, you saw that it was over an hour long. I tried my hardest to keep it around 45 minutes, but I just couldn't fit it in. There's so much information that I had to fit in. And as you can see here, there is, this is just showing you my Adobe Premiere, how much work went into this. These are each individual edits and cuts in audio, video, text, things like that. I mean, it's just an, an insane amount of work. This should hopefully be quite a bit shorter. So here we go. So I have with me Dustin McGovney from McGovney Detailing Solutions, and I'm just going to ask him a few questions uh, about what he liked and what he didn't like from using all of these polishers. Uh, so with in regards to the five and six inch polishers, what was your favorite and why? Uh, just one in particular? If, if you had to choose just well, well, okay. Let's let's do top three. Like, what what are what are your top three? And give me like, give me a reason why. Okay. What do you think? So, I've actually thought on this a little bit more. Cool. Um, top three, um, or my number one choice would be the Shine Mate. Okay. Um, second choice is going to be the Dewalt, and then my third choice would be the the Popo Man. Okay. The green, the green yeah, and yellow. Yeah. The green one. and okay. yellow one. So what was, what drew you to the DeWalt? Why did you like that so much? Was it the size, how it felt in your hands? So the coming from a Rupes machine, when you immediately pick up the DeWalt, is it as refined uh, as the Rupes machine? No, but you felt at home with it in your hands. So as far as the ergos, which are, mm -hmm. play a really big part on those cordless polishers, um, the ergos felt good, especially since the previous ones I had picked up didn't feel good until I picked up that one. Um, but it just, it felt good. It was, it's definitely heavier than like a Mark III, um, but it just, it kind of felt at home on where you could put your hands and whatnot. Do you feel that it would, re it could replace a Rupus polisher in your shop or would you just have it alongside? It's hard, isn't it? It's hard just because, uh, just how good the Rupus machines are. They're smooth, they're quiet. Um, don't have to deal with battery runtime, yeah, which is exactly. part of what we're focusing yeah. on here. So, um, now, is the cord annoying? Absolutely. But you know, they, to answer your question, yeah, I'd, I'd more than likely have one in the shop. Do you feel like the, these types of polishers are better suited as like finishing polishing instead of just using it as a heavy cut machine? I mean, it depends like with the runtime and whatnot. I'd honestly want to use one as for like your first cutting step and whatnot, and even finishing. I just love the simplicity of no cords and stuff yes. like that. And every, you know, several of these manufacturers have obviously made a, a good step in the right direction, but. Uh, yeah, ba battery technology has come a long way. Oh yeah. So, uh, okay, so if, if the DeWalt is number one, so you said Shine Mate's number two. Yeah. Uh, what did you like about that? Did you like the weight, the power, the smoothness? On the Shine Mate? Yeah, on the Shine Mate. So the want. Shine Mate, um, the ergonomics were really good as well. It wasn't annoying to hold or use. It was really smooth. And the smoothness and the power actually reminded me of the Mark III. Um, does it have as much power as the Dewalt? No, but um, it, it, it felt like home, you know okay. what I mean? So, especially when, you know, you're holding the same polisher every week for several hours, yes. you know what I mean? So you well, just, you're accustomed to that feel and whatnot. But. So on, on to the, the Popo Man. Uh, so it's the lightest in the test. It's, I think it's the cheapest. If, yeah. if not, it's one of the cheapest. Uh, so what, what did you like about that? So, so they're all kind of. Uh, the, yeah, there's pros and cons so to each of them. The, one of the biggest things is, um, I mean, it felt good in your hand. It was kind of loud. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Shannon, Shannon's over here. You'll, um, you'll hear from her here in a little bit. Yeah, it did have a, like a high pitch kind of um, a, a wine, or, yes, yeah. a wine to it. Um, but it was it was smooth as well, um, and the ergos were, were pretty good. the The top three are you know 
they're right there for me anyway. All, so. all, th all three would be good. Yeah. Good polishers, but not as a primary replacement to your your, it, yeah, your exactly. Rupes. Yeah. Um, and the color. Mm. Um, <laughs> you can't get over having yeah, a yellow polisher. I, I know. I know a lot of people mm. can probably see past it, but like, I like having machines that are that look all the same everything looks kind of uniform yes. and whatnot in the shop so, so. Every, everything black or everything gray yeah or something of course simple. okay let's talk about the the worst ones like why they were the worst and so they're with my experience it's always one of the big things i'm a stickler on is vibration yeah and if you're going to have one of these polishers in your hands for four or five six hours mm -hmm. a day not all at, at one time but your hands are going to start to feel oh yeah fatigue. for sure yeah so I'm, I'm sure that the bottom few are, that's some of the reason, yeah. but another, another thing that's one of our, one of our criteria that's always up high is power, yeah. which means the RPM, the, uh, the ability to not stall around yeah. funny corners. And some of them, as you saw, they stall even on a flat panel. Yeah. So just with even light pressure. Mm -hmm. So that, that is probably the reason why they're at the bottom. Then, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the biggest thing for me, um, my type, my style of polishing, I love to just let the machine do its thing. Go wild. I, okay. I like turning it all the way up. Mm -hmm. Just let the machine do the work, and I like something that doesn't stall at all. And I want to get the work done as soon as possible. So you you like more RPM, lighter pressure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Essentially. Okay. Essentially, you're, you know, I'm not my arm speed is not slow. My arm speed is usually Fast. pretty quick mm -hmm. and that, you know, complements the machine going faster. Okay. Um, but, um, but yeah, um, a lot of the machines that were in the lower bunch had no power. And for me to try to use something in like that in my shop, I'd have to spend so much more time trying to do the same amount of work that I could do at a faster pace. Makes but, sense, so. perfect sense. All right, well, I, I definitely appreciate the feedback, take, taking your time to try these products out and everything, and you know, I hope that something, some good comes of this. Cool, so, appreciate all right, it. Thanks. All right, I'm here with Timothy Mims of Alpha Pressure Washing here in Tyler, Texas. He has spent the last week, along with his guys in the shop here, going over all of these polishers, and so we're gonna get his opinion on how things ranked and how they, how they uh, held up. So before we even get to the top three, is there any of these that you would use to replace a corded polisher in your shop? Absolutely not. And why? Were they lacking in ultimate cut power or? Yes, we do a lot of heavy cutting. Um, I think right now where these cordless ones are at, they're not, they're not really there on the torque yet to do the kind of cutting that we do on some of these vehicles. I'm just suspecting that the reason they do that is probably to save battery life or something, you know, so it doesn't have a 10 minute runtime it has a 20 or 30 minute runtime so all right so we'll jump right into it top three is what what, so what gonna, is your favorite overall that's the dewalt so so we're going to go with the dewalt and as i said we do a lot of heavy cutting so it's the closest that i've seen that we could do some cutting the only machine's going to hold up is this yeah um pros and cons like i said it has the power um it's balanced now the con is going to be it's just really heavy it's kind of out of sync as far as the weight but weight that's probably why it has the cut power because of the motor being a little bit yeah so you're you're losing some and you're you're winning some um if i was going to put one in the shop on a cordless on this would be this yeah as, as far as these um i'm still kind of biased because i, I run you know my rotaries at dewalt so mm -hmm. i still would look at why would i have this if i've got if i got that so, so it, it would save you money in the long run because you already have the batteries so right. You, would, you wouldn't have to go out and buy more chargers. I mean, maybe a couple more batteries or something, but Correct. you already have that ecosystem here. Yes. So that's, that's another reason that it's good for you. Right. Okay. And, I, and I actually, you know, when I first saw this, I was thinking, the, the green Hope definitely man, threw yeah. me off. I'm like, ah, I'm not going to like this. But it did rather well. It's balanced, a yep. lot lighter. So when I pick this up, I'd like to have that kind of torque in this machine. Yes. So um, Popo, Popo Man, so it's the lightest in the test. It's about four pounds, where some of these are six, seven, eight pounds. Right. Uh, so it's the lightest. It's If it's not the cheapest, it's the second cheapest, something, but it's 160, 170 bucks. So now the, the, the pros, cons on this, I said I would buy this because of the, the cut power. It does have yes. a little bit of cut power. But I would buy this for the shop just for when guys are getting new to applying sealers yes. and, and different things, just to move oxidation, maybe do a one-step. Yeah. 
correction. And I shouldn't say correction, one step. I'm thinking one, one, one step, step polish, polish. right? Mm -hmm. um, to, to get them used to this would be okay instead of putting them straight to a rupus or something. So what, what did you not like about that? Is there, does it, was it uh, the noise or the Well, I'm still, I'm still always, I'm still, the, it has a little, you know, yeah. that, that doesn't really mess with me too much. You can put um, I'm on just always, correct. I'm just always thinking when I'm using machines, like I'm ready to, I'm ready to cut, like I'm ready yeah. to go to cut. And I think we're going to be missing that on that. But as far as doing a, a polish, I, I would, I would use the machine. Okay. okay. Like I said, as far as the, the balance and, and re reaching yeah. over, it's, it's not, I mean, this is a, a light machine. Yeah. And what was the runtime on this battery? Uh, I think it was, it was 28 minutes or something. So, I mean, it's, it's that's, better that's than decent. most. Yeah. That's decent. Yeah, absolutely. So that brings us to number three, which is the, uh, this one I got one put over number three is the shine mate and con right off the top from when you when you pick this up to you pick this up you feel the weight yep but Much heavier. didn't mind it was well balanced it was a balanced machine it was doing okay once again same application as far as maybe removing some light oxidation or one step polish or applying a sealer yep. to get someone used to a um, little bit heavier than that but still but, but kind of kind of user friendly yeah. wish it had a little more hand mm -hmm. Yeah, I've noticed that. Kind of space like, in that. A lot of them are trying that smooth design, which might look cool, but we, we, we use yeah. it. I mean, so, I mean, I've got a small hand. Your hand's yeah, bigger yeah, than mine. Yeah. And so I know for you, it's... it's as, as opposed to, like, putting putting these right next to each other, I mean, you can see that there's right. so much more. And so even, you know, you can just really hold on to it. Right. Uh, yeah, I agree. I, but I put, this, I put this third for overall torque and power. Okay. So I'm kind of basing a lot of it on balance, torque, and power. Cool. Those, those three combinations. All right, so... DeWalt, Popo Man, Shine Mate, there you go. Uh, well, uh, Tim, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to go over and check these out. Uh, it's, if it helps even one person figure out what the best polisher is, I know that I've learned a lot. I know you've learned a lot right. with all of these. Well, it's been it's, fun, and it's, yeah. this market's going to change so much. Yeah. And then for a lot of first-time detailers and people that are getting in paint correction, yes. you know, they're looking at this as this is kind of where they're starting, where this isn't where we started. Yeah. As we're saying, the yeah, DAs and the rotaries and the... Old Makitas and absolutely. The ones, we're, yeah. We were on big handles. We weren't yeah. even thinking about design. We're thinking about cut, cut, uh, cut. That's right. Well, and so I think a lot like electric cars, this is kind of the direction the industry is starting to go. Battery technology is improving. So I think that you're going to start seeing a whole lot more of these pop up. And you know, I haven't talked to him about this yet either, but there's another polisher that's on, coming on the market pretty soon, and it's the, the Bauer by Harbor Freight. So you'll probably see that added to this test, and we'll all, we'll all get our opinion, and we'll add that to it as well. Uh, so, well, anyway, uh, like I said, thanks again. We'll Absolutely. Very much appreciate, we appreciate it. you. Yeah, thank you. All right, so now we have my beautiful wife, Shannon. Been married almost 15 years. She runs the day-to-day -day here at our shop and she has spent the last week with these polishers as well. Not just the big polishers, but she's spent with the, uh, the three inch ones as well. So before we even d dive into it, you heard me ask the others this question, would you replace your Rupes polishers with any of these? No. Your corded polishers you would not replace with these. Why? It's, I'm, not as against having a cord as some of the others might be. It's, it's runtime and the amount of work that needs to be done. You know, I, I'm polishing every single day. So it's, I feel like I would go through the lifespan of a battery a lot quicker when I'm running a polisher all day long. So like some of these batteries, uh, one of them actually defines it, like the Shine Mate, they say 500 cycles for each battery. Uh, so if you have three a day, you know, that's just uh, like four months. That's all you're gonna get out of those. Yes. So, and that's, that becomes expensive at $100 a piece or something to replace it, which you wouldn't have to worry about with a corded tool. So yeah, I get that. Okay. So uh, other than just your, your situation, did you not like the power? Did any of them not have the, the oomph? They felt like they could have more power because a corded machine does. Yeah. But for someone who's maybe mobile or they are a weekend warrior, someone who doesn't need a polisher every day, then it could possibly be a good fit for so, someone. Like you said, a weekend warrior, they may only use some of these tools once or twice a year, 
where we're using them every single day, several hours a day. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. Uh, so let's jump into your top three or four. Uh, number one for you is the Shine Mate. Shine Mate. And it doesn't have a battery on it right now. But what did you like? What did you not like? I like the positioning of everything, the ergonomics of it fit well for my size hand and it has everything fairly close to the same positioning as what I am used to. So familiarity is yes. one. You said you like the power. The power is pretty great for a cordless machine. It, it feels like it does a good job and it's not it's not overly heavy like some of these others not as heavy as some of they're the all they're all fairly heavy but it's not overly heavy like some of these others. tolerable are. yeah okay uh so what makes it number one versus all of these others it's just the power or how it fe it just feels right is what you it does feel right and it's probably uh that it's sort of a two for one when you go for the three inch and i know that's in another video but you're saving room in your shop, not having to have another plug or another charging yeah, we station. Even, so the ecosystem ties in pretty well. Yeah, so if you have, you already have, I don't know if Shine Mate, Shine Mate makes other tools that use that battery, but I'm, I'm sure they do. Uh, but like DeWalt, where you have one battery that powers a hundred and something tools. Yeah, I, I, yeah, that makes sense. So your number two was the Makita, yes. why? Uh, the flexibility of being able to go from random orbital to forced rotation, forced rotation, yes, and being able to do it with just a trigger. Yeah, you so don't have to change a head or or anything like that. And so I, I know we didn't we didn't really test it's, any forced rotation because I know Flex makes a forced forced rotation too, but it's a second machine. It's a, yeah, it's like two machines in one. It, it really is. is. Uh, it doesn't do as much work as some of these others, you know, the 12, 15 millimeters, it's only a 730 second orbit, which is 5.5 millimeters. So it's not doing as much work, but you may not be using that for cutting. You could use forced rotation for cutting and then flip it over to random orbital and use that yes. for finishing. That would be where that machine would be perfect. You could do both. And the protection on the, the battery. This is rubber right here. Yes, so if you. That's nice. And the fact that we already have the ecosystem. Yeah, we, we have Makita, the, the robotic vacuum that we keep in, a sh in the shop to clean up, keep the dust down. Uh, we've already got some Makita tools, so that works in ours. Uh, okay, so moving on to number three is <laughs> the Flex. So the Flex. It is much lighter. Than the Makita, yeah. Yes, much lighter than, than the Makita and the DeWalt, but that's the heaviest one. Right? Yeah, I think Makita, DeWalt, uh, they're, they're, I think, the heaviest, and I think Flex is up there, but it's not the heaviest. The, uh, it's, it's a more refined instrument than some of, or it's a more refined tool than some of the others that are in the test. Refined how, like gear noise, quiet, smooth, what? Gear noise and the, how it, the ergonomics of it. It, it feels it, quality. It does feel saying. quality. Okay. It doesn't feel like it's going to r rattle all over the place and shake and have vibration too much or that the vibration is going to cause the machine to fall apart. Well, so let me ask you one thing then. Uh, Tim had mentioned he doesn't like how some of these don't have a big handle up here. Do you, is it, I guess you have smaller hands, so that's maybe not, smaller a, hands. not as big a deal. And I tend to, the, the Rupes, or my polisher that I use is a little longer. It's not necessarily bigger. But it's not, it's not uncomfortable. It's not uncomfortable short. for my size hand. Like someone, someone like me, I, I find that that's too short. And as, a, as opposed to like the Makita, you know, it hold it up to nice the camera there, grip. where you can see you see the difference in the grip there. If you, j just the overhang, there's, there's quite a bit of difference. So, all right, so quality, um, do you kind of have the same complaint as everybody else where it runs for about 10 minutes and then it falls off? Uh, if, it, if it ran for full power for that full 30 or 40 minutes, would this be higher up on your list? Yes, would it, would it, it win? would probably win if it could go full strength. 
Yeah. Or, or full, if it could go full power for the full length of the charge charge on the battery, then it would definitely be a, a winner. So it, it, it has the power, but it needs more RPM. And then it falls flat on its face after 10 minutes. That's where it goes down the list. So, okay. Uh, honorable mention, you had the DeWalt. And why do you like or not like that? I know you said the, the bulk, the, the weight of it, and... It's, it's a little loud in comparison to the Flex, and it doesn't hit that frequency that does tend to bother me. And uh, it just, it doesn't feel as nice in my hands as some of the others. Uh, my, the, the trigger is a little too, the, the Far area, away. it's a little too bulky. Okay, well. For, my size hand. And that, that's one of the things I loved about it was the fact that my, my hands fit perfect on it. It's got a big place to hold on to. It's got a big place for your hand where the battery's not in the way. You know, some of these other ones, the Harden, the Atoms, for example, like I can't fit my hand comfortably between where you're supposed to. It, uh, it just doesn't, doesn't feel comfortable. Um, so, the, so the big drawback for this, other than the noise, is like the, the feel the build quality, I guess. So yes. whereas like you have the flex in and it feels like a quality piece and it just, it, the, the way it sounds, the way it feels, feels quality. It's very familiar to me as well. But if, uh, uh, like I said earlier, if it's something, if, if you're looking for a polisher and you haven't used a high end or a more uh, advanced tool, or you're looking for something that might not be as expensive, a lot of these would be a great choice. Well, so looking at your top four, all of those are multiple hundreds of dollars. You know, the, the Shine Mate's like 400, the Flex is 400, the Makita is 600, the, the Wald is five or 600. So these are all some of the most expensive in the test. If you were sh shopping by price, would you still wait and save up for one of these or would you go down the line and are there others that you may consider if you were only price shopping? Do I have a polisher already? <laughs> well, I guess that's another <laughs> that's... thing. So let's let's say you don't have a polisher, and you're going to you're going to buy your first polisher. You're a weekend warrior. You're kind of on a tight budget. What would you what would you choose? You don't you don't have six hundred dollars to spare to buy a polisher. I mean, the Popo Man's not a, it's not a terrible machine. If you don't have anyone else to worry about that has sensitive hearing or uh, little kids running around, it's not, it's not a bad tool. It, it, it does a, the job. It does the job. It's, uh, I, I think that I just tend to float towards something that is a little more refined yeah. and uh, more finely tuned because they've uh, been, they've been in the game for a long time. Yeah. Well, the, the big, uh, this was one of my top three and the, the unknown with this is the overall build quality, like long-term where, you know, like a DeWalt, Makita, Flex, Shinemate, you know, those are going to last in a professional environment. They're, they've, they've been tried and true with all their other products. So it's pretty safe to assume that these are going to do okay. Uh, whereas something like this, that excels in just about everything, but you just don't know anything about it. Uh, you know, how, how long is the, are the gears going to last or the bearings before you start having issues? But and again, if you're, if you're price shopping, this is probably a good option. The, uh, w when you have to take into consideration, some of these are like $600. This thing could break three times and you're still money ahead versus buying a Makita or something like that. Yes. Um, so things things to take into consideration, but yeah, if you're if you're just a weekend warrior, this is probably going to be perfect. Where you it has a standard backing plate, so if you don't like the bigger backing plate, you can swap to the smaller one. I mean, it's there's a you you have options. So all right, well that concludes our interview with Shannon, and we will move on to the next one. All right, so I'm here with Corey Davis, Colors on Parade, Longview, Texas, and crew of other guys that are here. Everybody's had a chance to use all of these polishers, and so Corey's going to speak for everybody else that doesn't want to be on camera right now, too. Um, so you're basically, before we get into this, what uh, would, would you replace 
with any of these polishers what you currently use in the shop that's corded? It would, it, with the right amount of batteries, yes. Um, so you, you could completely go cord free with, it, with yes. enough batteries? Okay. With enough batteries, yes. All right, sure. so getting into your top three, what, what did you like and why? Uh, for the five inch? For the, for the five, five and six inch ones. Right, so this was probably my favorite, it's a Shine Mate. Uh, it's smooth, ergonomics are good. Um, plenty of power, didn't stall very easy. Uh, so it was good. The next for me was the DeWalt. The only drawback was really the size of it and the so, batteries. You know? So it's, yeah, it's, it's definitely a big machine. Very uh, big. But the, the grip and all that, that was good for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then your third place. Probably the Makita, okay. just for the simple fact that it can do force rotation and uh, dual action. Okay. But not nearly enough power on just straight dual action. You have to turn it on to force rotation. Yeah. Uh, and it's not one that I would want to correct a whole vehicle with. So you at all. you wouldn't uh, you wouldn't use it for heavy cutting or anything, but maybe like a finishing um, or. So if I had to sand some spots, yeah, uh, I would use it to cut the sand scratches out and then probably pick up something else to finish with. Okay. So. All right. Um, as far as your least favorite, did you have one that, that you really didn't uh, like? Mm, I mean, no, the uh, Adams, honestly, the, was the Adams. probably the word. I think it was that one. Yeah, was that the, uh, yeah, the vibration was the, the deal vibration, breaker? The it's just so bad. It was just unbearable. Yeah. There's no way I could run that for, yeah. for uh, yeah. even 30 minutes. Yeah, your, your hands would, would yeah, bother you. So. Sure. Okay, well. Um, everything else was just kind of, you know, Medi about, mediocre. About the same. Yeah. Okay. Not enough power. Yeah. Uh, either if they if they weren't lack if they had plenty of power, maybe they the the charge time, the runtime. Right. Yeah. That's the a factor. charging was a big drawback to to several of them. Yeah. So, so you, you have like the Dewalt, the what is it, the Makita, the Flex. They right. can charge Pretty around fast. an hour or less. Sure. Whereas some of these, like the Adams, it's three, three hours, hours to charge. Right. So That's a no okay. For sure. All right. Well, uh, I really appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to, to help sure. us out. Absolutely. I mean, Anytime. much appreciated. Yeah. All right, Absolutely. thank you. Have All right. Day. So you've heard from the five other detailers, professional detailers of various skill levels and experience levels. Now let's hear what Scott has to say. The five and six inch polishers for me, there are two that really stood out. And for me, it is the DeWalt and the Popo Man. And I'll, I'll get into a little detail as to why. So the DeWalt, it has the power that you could genuinely replace, in my opinion, you could replace a corded polisher with. There's a couple other things that we really liked and the, the other detailers seem to agree with this is that it has the power, it has the right ergonomics where, let me put this down. It has the right ergonomics for somebody with small hands, somebody with big hands. You know, I have very large hands, but my hands fit this perfect. It just feels right in your hand. Where the other benefit is it has a variable trigger. You can run it slow. You can, and then you can still control it with the speed dial. It, it just, it, you, you have a very good amount of control. The, some of these other ones have like an instant on trigger and then they only have three speeds. If you have the, the roll dial here plus a variable trigger, look at it like a, a continuously variable transmission in a car. You have an infinite a number, you have an infinite amount of speeds, but then the tool also has the power to back it up. The, the big downside is the weight. And now it's not the heaviest in the test, but it is one of the heaviest. And you can see where the weight is it's all up here. So if you were to actually like try to balance it, it's not in the middle of the tool. This is with, with a five amp hour battery, but it's somewhere pretty far forward, which tells you that there's a lot of weight up here. Now, if you wanted to change that, you could run a heavier battery, a larger battery, like a eight amp hour, and that would probably help a little bit. The, the other benefits to this tool are you have the DeWalt ecosystem, like the Makita and the Flex, like the, like the Makita and the Flex, where 
if you already have this ecosystem in your shop or at home or in your garage, then you don't have to buy any batteries. So then this tool just became a couple hundred dollars cheaper. That's great. The, the cons to this tool, other than the weight, in my opinion, it has the, a proprietary backing plate. Now DeWalt is owned by Stanley Black & Decker, Craftsman, you know, that, that's uh, kind of the, the heritage, but it has a proprietary backing plate. So you can't just go to the store and buy a replacement sanding backing plate like most of these have. You have to buy this. I haven't looked into what this costs, but I bet it's not inexpensive. It is a consumable item that you need to keep in, in consideration if you're using it in a professional environment because backing plates do wear out. They're not like pads where you know, you're gonna go through them pretty quick, but it is another thing in addition to batteries to keep in mind if you're gonna run these professionally. My other one that I really liked was the Popo Man. Now, this is one, I saw it available on Amazon. So it had decent reviews. I thought, all right, we'll go ahead and order it and try it. Now, with, with, a, uh, with two batteries and a charger, it costs $177. That's pretty inexpensive. To have high praise that all of these professionals had with this, that says something. The downside is we don't know longevity, longevity wise, how it's gonna hold up. It is an inexpensive tool. It's, it doesn't feel incredibly cheap like some of these others, but it's not, it doesn't scream quality like Flex or Makita or some of these others. So that's something to keep in mind. It doesn't have a variable trigger. It's either on or off, but you do have your six speeds. So knowing that, do you, you have to weigh some of the pros and cons on what you're looking for, but it has a good handle. It has good ergonomics. You can, it has a standard backing uh, pad where if you didn't like the six inch, you can switch to the five inch, which is 150 or 125 millimeter uh, backing plate. If that's whatever you use in your shop, we like using five inch pads, five inch backing plates in our shop. Uh, so if we run this in our shop, I'm definitely changing the backing plate. And as a matter of fact, we will run this in our shop and we're gonna see how it holds up. I'm gonna get another battery because I only bought this as it came in the kit from Amazon, but replacement batteries are $35. Very inexpensive as far as a lithium ion battery goes. So well done. I think this, if, if, you're, a, if you're a weekend warrior, I would highly suggest something like this. If you're, it's, it's, you're gonna use it a couple times a year, if that, this is probably what's gonna work for you if you're looking for a cordless polisher. My third place was the Makita. And it's not really a fair comparison because it's not that great as a random orbital polisher. However, as forced rotation, it is a beast. And it's one of the heavier products in the test, but it's one of the better balanced. And I mean, you can see this is, this is one of the heavier tools and I'm just kind of tossing it around because the weight is here and the weight is here. It has good ergonomics. It has a variable trigger where you can start it slow and go as fast as you want. It has not only the zero through or one through five speed selector, but you also have two ranges, one for forced rotation, one for random orbital. So if you're going to use any of these for heavy correction, this may be what you want. And finally, something that Going into this test, none of us have really used any of these cordless polishers, but you, you, you want to come in with an open mind and remain completely unbiased. However, I know the flex was something that people were really looking forward to hearing the results and finding the results, how this compares to all these others. This one was kind of a letdown for me because it just, it didn't quite have the RPM, that, that oomph that you really want in a polisher. That was the primary thing that I noticed using it. The second thing was the, not so much the runtime because it, run for, it ran for about 40 minutes, but it's the, the battery performance. So it would, it, would, it would work fantastic 
for about 10 minutes and then you could immediately hear and tell, you could feel it, the performance just dies off really quick and it stays there for the remainder of the 30-ish minutes that it runs and it, it continues to dwindle as it gets right to the end. So not only is it already lacking a little bit of power and RPM, but after 10 minutes, it gets even worse. So the remedy could be a larger battery. I know they make a larger battery for this. I didn't test it, but I'm, I'm testing everything as they came. So that is something to keep in mind. If I were in a professional environment and going to buy a cordless polisher, I wouldn't buy this one because at the, the, the performance level, I look at it as something that would only last 10 minutes, not something that runs for 40 minutes. If you're applying a finishing polish or a, maybe even a wax, then maybe that's fine, but not as a heavy correction compounding tool like some of these others. So there we go, guys. I hope this was eye-opening for you. It definitely was for us and the five others that you saw. Um, I've learned a lot. I, we're, we're keeping all of these, obviously. So we're going to be using them in our shop and maybe we'll do some long-term updates for them. They, uh, some, some, as you can, you can see, are better than others. If you do want to consider purchasing any of these, please purchase them through the links in the description. Those are Amazon Associates. So you can see, spent $6,000 on these polishers. I'd like to try to recoup some of that before the wife gets upset at me here. Um, it's, it's just a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of thought has gone into this between buying specialty meters, everything else. There is nothing else like this on YouTube. And I would garner to say, it's probably gonna stay that way for a long time. There are new ones coming through the pipeline. I will do an addendum to the test. I will get those. Uh, Harbor Freight, Bauer, they are in the process of coming out with one. So we will make sure that one's tested. If you hear any others, let me know in the comments. And I will make sure. So the, the ones like the Shine Mates, I originally wasn't planning on getting those because they're not available in the US. I had to order them through Carzilla in Canada. So they're not available on Amazon, but you can get them through Carzilla if that's something you like. So I wanted to say thank you again. Make sure you're subscribed. If you like tests like this, let me know in the comments. It does help out the algorithm and we will see you guys soon. Thanks guys.